Hi everyone, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Well, today's video is gonna be all about lilies. But before we get started, let me share with you the winner of the lily bulb giveaway, and that is Marion Hintz. So Marion Hintz, congratulations. You're the winner of 15 Casablanca lily bulbs courtesy of Longfield Gardens. Please just send me your mailing address either via Instagram direct message or Facebook private message and we'll be sure to get those lily bulbs right to you. But without further ado, let's just dive right into the list. I made some notes because I really want this video to be as helpful as possible. And I wanna share nine varieties that I've grown in the past that either I really, really liked or that I thought were different than what I expected. And then I'm gonna share seven new varieties that I'm gonna be growing this year and that hopefully that we can all enjoy growing, cutting, and selling them together. So why don't we just start with the Casablanca lily because I have about 100 in my garden at this point and I really feel like I can't have enough. Casablanca and stargazer lilies were the first lilies that I ever grew here at this garden. I had grown a lot of longiflorum lilies over at our past home, but when we moved here and I won those lily bulbs from Garden Answer, like I told you a while ago, I was so thankful because I think I was going into my third season growing cut flowers and I had never sold lilies in the bouquets before. Well, wouldn't you know it, when I started to put lilies in my bouquets, my bouquets sold out. I mean, sometimes I'm telling you the honest truth, they'll sell out within an hour of them being out there. And of course, you know, there's a lot of variables. I live on a really busy street. A lot of my neighbors sell flowers, which I actually view that as a positive because people are coming to my area to buy flowers and produce. The more people selling flowers, the better. I just have to kind of differentiate myself from my Amish friends and neighbors who are selling maybe different flowers than what I'm selling. So that first year selling cut lilies, I only grew Casablanca and Stargazer. Those are both oriental lilies, so they're really highly fragrant lilies. They're very reliable lilies. They return year after year. When you cut any lily, you always wanna leave a third of the foliage behind so that the bulb has enough energy to regenerate itself for next year. But I love both of those lilies. Casablanca is a pure white lily that pairs beautifully with anything or also sells fabulous to a florist that might be doing weddings or if you're doing your own wedding, Casablanca would be a great lily. And on the other hand, Stargazer is that beautiful pink lily that we all know and love. I'm constantly still seeing Stargazer being like on the top five list of cut flowers in the whole world. Stargazer seems to remain in the top five and I can see why beautiful pink flowers, bold flowers, highly fragrant in a reliable bulb. So with both of those bulbs, even though they're ones that still are readily available at the grocery store when you think about it, when you see a farm grown or home grown lily versus a grocery store lily, I mean, they're not even comparable in terms of quality. Sometimes like a stargazer a lily will give me a full two weeks in the vase. So both of those lilies are worthwhile investment. Last year, I invested into even more stargazer lily bulbs just because I felt like they were selling well. And then as I got to know my customers on a more personal basis, they literally told me they loved the stargazer lilies. Next, let's move on to some rose lilies. So have you guys been hearing all kinds of people in the industry hyping rose lilies? They're all going crazy for them, saying they last forever in the vase, they're pollenless, they're fragrant, but they're lightly fragrant. So of course last year I wanted to give them a try. So I purchased 40 rose lily Aditha bulbs and 40 rose lily Tatiana. And I loved both of them and thought they were a worthwhile investment, but Aditha in particular, I think might be my all time favorite lily for cutting because it did last forever in a vase. Its petals were this beautiful soft pink. So it had a very romantic feeling and it just went well with every other flower that I was growing. You know, I was pairing it with 
Buplurum and Scabiosa and Snapdragons and Larkspur and Nigella and Sage and it just worked so beautifully and it was so elegant. I think I even had some Cafe au lait dahlias blooming alongside Aditha there kind of in July and I made some arrangement with those. And when it came to Rosalie Tatiana, it almost seemed like the double version of Stargazer. I can't think of any other way to describe it because it had the same coloring as Stargazer. It was kind of that hot flamingo pink color with white around the margins. Also it has this kind of cute darker freckles and that kind of dark raspberry color. But once again, it doesn't have pollen, it's lightly fragrant, and it lasts longer in the vase than your Stargazer Lily. So I loved it, a worthwhile investment. I think if I had to choose though between Aditha and Tatiana, I really would choose Aditha, but both are worthwhile growing. And hopefully in the future, I can really get my hands on more rose lilies because I think they really are great cut lilies. Next, I wanna move on to the lily I've been getting the most questions about this year, and that is Mapira. Mapira is an Asiatic lily, so no fragrance, and the petals on Mapira are so dark. I think they're classified as dark burgundy, but depending on how the light hit them, they were almost like a chocolate or a black color, which I thought was absolutely gorgeous. They brought so much drama and mystery to an arrangement. And since I was growing a lot of other dark colored flowers last year, I grew, of course, Dara, Black Knight Scabiosa, some other grasses with dark plumes. I really felt like having this dark lily to work with was just wonderful when it came to making mixed bouquets in dark colors. So I do have a confession though. So I think I bought 40 Mapira bulbs. I sold almost none of them because I kept them all for myself. <laughs> so that's kind of embarrassing and not very good business, but that's just how much I personally fell in love with this lily. I just love sometimes designing just for us, just so I can get some practice and hope to become better. And Mapira, just, I just fell in love with it. Another lily I've grown before is Corvara. And I had invested in this lily because I thought it looked kind of like a more vibrant and bold version of Stargazer when I saw the picture online. But when I grew it, it had a lot of interesting features which were actually not what I was looking for in a cut flower. And I hope that by sharing this experience, even though it might sound negative, that my aim here is to be helpful because I really feel like Corvara is better as a garden lily than it is as a cut lily. The petals were very recurved, so they went kind of back like this, and also the heads tilted downward somewhat. And anytime I'm making a mixed bouquet or working on something for the stand, I always prefer upward facing blooms or outward, but rarely am I really looking for a downward facing bloom. And Corvara, at least here in my garden, and let me know if you've had a different experience, Corvara faced too downward to make it easy to work into an arrangement. And I think I even have some pictures of arrangements that did sell, but I had to do a lot of manipulating to get their heads to stand up. So sometimes you can take like a stem of Autumn Joy Sedum or something really strong and kind of stick it under the lily and push it upward. But even when I was doing that, Corvara's head was so heavy and so downward that it just didn't want to do that. You know, it wanted to be downward and it really, I think, wanted to be a standalone flower. So I eventually started picking them and selling them in bunches at the stand, and those sold better than the ones in mixed bouquets. But you know, if I had to go back in time and make that order again, I would probably skip buying Corvara altogether and double my order of Aditha and what I'm gonna talk about next, which is Salmon Star. So Salmon Star is an oriental lily, so highly fragrant, and to me it almost looks like the peach version of Stargazer. And when I was placing my order last year and I saw Salmon Star, it was like immediately, I knew I wanted to add it to my cart. 
I was growing some peach dahlias and I was growing a lot of peach yarrow and other things like that. So I thought having a peach lily would be great. And this is definitely one that exceeded my expectations. It was a beautiful garden flower, but once again, it made a fabulous cut flower, pairing just absolutely beautiful with everything else that I happened to be growing. Definitely I felt like Salmon Star was a worthwhile investment, both as a garden flower and a cut flower. I think you would enjoy it, especially if you love peach in your garden. Salmon Star is definitely one I think you'll enjoy. Another oriental lily that I've grown is called Montezuma. This is a beautiful deep red lily that makes a real big splash in the garden. And I think if you're someone who really enjoys red in the garden and it's more of a blue red, which I definitely appreciated, you'll really love having it. I just didn't happen to grow enough filler flower to support the color of Montezuma. And because of that, I ended up just kind of playing with it on my own. I was trying to pair it with purple and kind of do that purple red vibe. I'm not really thinking that I nailed it so much. I need some more practice pairing those two colors together. I thought it was a beautiful lily. I thought it made a great cup flower, but just personally, I wasn't growing the correct fillers to pair with it. And that was an important lesson to learn. Now, last on my list is a summer wine Asiatic mix. And Asiatics are the first to bloom in the garden. So this mix plus Mapira blooms, I would say it was blooming around late June for me here in 6B when I planted them in mid-April. But all that to say, I grew this mix in particular after hearing both from my customers and my mom that really the scent of Oriental was too overwhelming for them. They loved the look of lilies, but the scent was so off-putting to them personally that they avoided lilies in arrangements. So I decided to grow a mix just to get my hands on a few different colors and see which ones I liked best. So Summer Wine had a mix of whites, pinks, kind of pinky purple even in there, and also a red. I love them all. I cut and sold them all immediately. I think I probably only have one or two pictures of them in the garden and then probably a lot of them in hand tie bouquets, but they were great because they bloomed early. It kind of bridged that gap between, you know, my peonies would come on late May, then I'm there kind of with my early sunflowers, but they're just starting. But to have those Asiatics at that time of the year was really helpful. So let's go ahead and move on to some lily varieties that I've ordered for this year. And I really ordered heavily this year on lilies that I want to grow as garden lilies because, you know, I've been thinking about redesigning my grandma's garden and she grew tons and tons and tons of lilies, especially Mardigan lilies, trumpet lilies, longiflorum lilies, and I just don't have that many of those varieties in my garden. So I invested in different varieties for cutting, but also ones that I just want to enjoy. You know, the thing about all my lilies here in the garden is you may not have seen them all because they've all been cut and sold by the time I get around to doing a garden tour. So the first one I got is called Scheherazade. This is an OT lily, so a cross between the oriental and the trumpet lily. This lily can get really tall, five to six feet tall with 20 flowers per stem. And I wanna position this lily and another one I'll mention around my grandma's chair, almost as an enclosure of lilies around her. So that if you were to sit in her chair, which is low to the ground, it's a short rock chair, you would look up and you would just see kind of this heaven of lilies or kind of as if the stars above you were actually lilies. And Scheherazade in the pictures, it looks like a red and a yellow. And to be honest, I just loved it. I thought it looked like fun. I wanted to give it a try and I'll be excited to share it with you guys. So the next one I purchased is called Eastern Moon. And did you ever just see a picture of a flower and immediately connect with it? You like don't even read the description to see how tall or how many flowers it's gonna get. You just fall head over heels in love with the picture. That's how I really felt about Eastern Moon. So this is another tall lily, an OT lily, getting about five to six feet tall at maturity, 20 flowers per stem. 
possible. And this flower is so interesting because it has kind of pale silvery pink petals and a glowing yellow throat. So I'm really curious to see this lily in the evening and see if it functions almost as like a moon garden flower, even though it's not white, because the way the photograph was taken, it has really kind of a dark background. It almost makes the flower look like it's glowing in the evening. So I'm really excited about this one. And that one's going to be going in my grandma's garden as well. Now next up is one that I did purchase for cutting and it's called Lavon. Lavon is an OT lily but it doesn't get quite as tall as the last two that I mentioned. It is supposed to be a great cut flower and I've heard other growers mention this variety before. But when I saw how wonderful Salmon Star both paired with other things I grew and also sold at the stand, I really wanted to grab another lily that was kind of in that peachy color tone. And the way Levon is described is a pale yellow lily with rusty red streaking toward the center of the bloom. But the combination of those colors almost give it kind of this peachy orange effect to me. So hopefully I got it right in ordering this one and it will pair well with Salmon Star, but I think it's one that we'll just have to grow it and see what happens. The next one I ordered is called Alberta Morning and I feel like I shouldn't even attempt to describe this lily. We should just all look at the picture and drool because I feel like that's what happened to me when I was on the website. They're kind of this amazing two-tone white cranberry pink with dark pink freckles really a lot going on in these flowers. And in general, Mardigan lilies, the flower themselves is much smaller than say an oriental lily or a long florum lily, which is really a big, big showy flower. Mardigan has a lot smaller flower, but with a lot of the flowers per stem. And Mardigan lilies and also species lilies are the best lilies if you have kind of a part shade garden and you wanna still grow lilies. I would check out the species and the Mardigan lilies, and there are lots of really cool and interesting varieties in those two families. And speaking of species lilies, I went ahead and invested in Black Beauty because I keep reading articles where Black Beauty is mentioned, and so I really wanted to kind of get my hands on some and grow them myself. They have these beautiful raspberry maroon petals and also a contrasting apple green throat. It appears to have kind of these tightly recurved petals. And I've also seen that it's noted as having really strong growth. So I think I'll add these Black Beauty lilies into my hydrangea room. It's part sun over there, and I already have some Corvara lilies back there, which is kind of in a similar color palette. And I think just having the contrast of the species lily, which is a bit smaller flower head, and the Corvara, but being in the same color palette, will be a really nice mixture. The next lily I ordered is called Gaucho. I think that's how you say it. It's G-A-U-C-H-O. But this is an OT lily that I bought specifically for cutting and selling. So you know I have the Casablanca lily and then I have lots of different pinks. And Gaucho seems to combine both of those colors in one lily. So it's predominantly a white lily, but then it has this beautiful streaking toward the center and kind of a uh, dark kind of magenta color, I guess you could say. I really thought that would pair well, especially with my Casablanca lilies and maybe mix in some Black Knight Scabiosa and maybe some Espresso Gladiolas. And that would really be a nice and easy and beautiful mixed bouquet that I can whip up really quickly and just put out at the stand. So I'm really excited to grow that and I'm really hoping my customers will like it. The last lily I ordered is called Regale, and I ordered this lily specifically because, you know, I'm kind of an old soul. In fact, most of my friends in real life would probably tell you that I'm like an 80 year old trapped in a middle aged body, but I just kind of resonate with things of the past, and I love flowers that really have stuck around and stood the test of time and have a story and a place in history. And I had read that Regale was introduced in 1903 originally. So over a hundred years, this lily has been cultivated. It's a beautiful trumpet lily. I have absolutely no trumpet lilies in this garden. 
And I just wanted to add one and I thought, why not add one of these classics? So I went ahead and ordered Regale. So those are all the new lilies I'll be growing this year. And I'd love to hear your personal experience with lilies ones that you've grown and you've loved, maybe ones that you've grown and were underperformers for one reason or another, ones that you felt worked really good as cut flowers or were left better in the garden, anything and any information you have to share about lilies, I'm all ears. I'm also going to put in the description section some culture sheets that I've acquired over the years. So they'll be like PDF sheets on growing lilies in crates, on high tunnels, general lily production, pest prevention for anyone dealing with red lily leaf beetle, things of that nature. So guys, with all that being said, I wanna wish you a great day. It seems that a large delivery of mulch is sitting in my driveway, so I need to get to work. I'll see you next time. Bye.